We worship you. You are worthy. Yes, yes, yes. We do be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. Yes. You are worthy. Yes, yes. moments of the preached word. Lord, center us that we might hear from God through your word. Father, may the words that I speak be divine and seasoned with grace. Father, may I rightly divide the word of truth so that when it hits the ears of the listener. Well, all right, all right. Their spirits leap with joy to hear your word. Your word yeah. Lord, your word is all that will stand at the end. Amen. Lord, the scripture is clear that the five powers will fade and the grass will burn, but Lord,
began to mentor him and began to sculpt him and show him the ways of what it means to govern a, govern a people. Caesar, Julius Caesar, saw this young man, poured into this young man, gave to this young man. This young man comes into his house, but I want to let you know because it gives context to this text. Julius Caesar's nephew, Octavius, kills him one year after he gets there. Mm -hmm. His son, his nephew, rather, was more concerned about having power than he was about having a pocket. He was more concerned about having being the king than he was concerned with the kingdom. He was concerned with himself. This man named Octavius. Right. Octavius gets with another man named Mark, and they work together with another man named Lepid, and, and they all work together to take over this kingdom of Rome. Right. I want you to have an understanding. How you get it is how you got to keep it. Well, well. well. If you steal to get it, you got to work extra hard to keep it. If you lie to get it, you got to tell more lies to keep it. Well, it just it just always pays to just do it right the first time. You don't have to worry about all the extra stuff that comes along with it. Just do it right the first time. Yeah, I tell you this. And Mark and Levi, they all were in the hoops and they all worked together to kill Julius Caesar. So guess what happened? They all had to fight wars against each other because everybody wanted to be the king. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand this. In the world in which they were living, in the world in which this text is written, in the world in the context of this text, these three men fought each other. I want you to know that old men start war. Yeah. They young men have to fight war. And often the young men don't know why they're fighting. Amen. We see it in Russia. We see, and we see it in Ukraine. We see it happening right now in Gaza. Wars do nothing but destroy the world. These three men were engaged in war. Well, Octavius and Mark were brother-in-law, so they got together. They killed the other man. He's out the picture. So now these two men fight against each other. And in fighting against each other, guess what? I got to find some money to pay for this war. I got to find some money so that I can keep these people on the battlefield. I got to find some Why? Because if I don't find some money, guess what happens? I lose the war. I lose my power. I lose my prestige. So they fought the war. Finally, Octavius wins. And I want you to know that when you have a wicked ruler that wins, you have a world of trouble on your hands. Amen. He wins and he gets, you know, Rome was a republic. That means they had the ability to vote. They had the ability to, to go to Senate and to listen to people converse. When Octavius took over, Octavius went to the Senate and told the Senate, make me an emperor. They made him Augustus. That's where this word comes from, Caesar Augustus, emperor of the whole world. They made him a Caesar, and guess what he did? He destroyed the Roman Empire, little by little. The first, one of the first things he does, right. he says, I got to get a tax. Government, this, this government in this text enacted a tax and requires that every man go to their hometown and register to pay the tax. The thing about taxes is we got to pay. If you if, listen, if you own the house this month, I think you got till the 18th to pay that tax bill, and then you have to pay extra money. You got to pay taxes. 
You pay taxes when you make money. You pay taxes when you buy something. You pay taxes even when you die. You got to pay taxes. Caesar Augustus knew this. Caesar Augustus said, these people got to fund this for or because of my ego. And I'm going to make sure they go. Because I'm going to tell them to go each one of them to their home, on time. And understanding this negligent nativity, the first point we have to understand was the government had a responsibility to care. They had a responsibility to care. Caesar Augustus said, I'm going to use this tax money. And in using this tax money, I'll be able to live the life that I want to live and do what I want to do all on the backs of the people. You know, Tupac said it this way. He said they got money for war and we can't feed the poor. Yeah. The thing about taxes is taxes are either regressive or progressive. Regressive taxes. That means no matter how much money each of us in here makes, we all got to pay the same thing. Mm -hmm. Sales tax is a regressive tax. Property tax can be a regressive tax. We all got to pay. If you live in the same city, got the same kind of house, it doesn't matter if you brought it in 1970 or if you brought it in 2017. When the tax man comes to assess it, he's going to say these houses are the same. You got to pay the same thing. They got to pay. But I'm retired. I don't care. It's a regressive tax. <laughs> regressive taxes do not give any kind of credence to people who may not have any money. Wow. Regressive taxes, school levy taxes, taxes, these are regressive taxes. When I lived in Tennessee, Tennessee had a very regressive tax. You had, they didn't have an income tax. So you could make all the money you wanted to make in Tennessee. You wasn't going to get charged for it, but Lord, they had an almost 11% sales tax. No matter how poor you was, you had to pay taxes on food, you had to pay taxes on groceries, you had to pay it on gasoline, you had to pay it on your house. Every which way you went, you had to be taxed. And that's exactly what happens in this tax. This tax shows us that Caesar who has a responsibility to care for his people, decides that I'm going to tax them. And in taxing them, I'm going to make sure I take care of myself. I'm going to say a thing right now about school taxes. Next year, they're going to have a school levy in the city of Cleveland. Now, school taxes do pay for schools. But I want you to hear this. If the state of Ohio funds schools as they're supposed to constitutionally fund schools, you won't have to pay as much in school board taxes as you think. But because the state of Ohio decides that everybody should put in a little bit of money, they say those school levy taxes is what's going to pay for all of these schools. And the people who end up losing out the most are our children. Shaker Heights has some of the highest taxes in this entire state. Shaker Heights, University Heights, Cleveland Heights, some of the highest taxes in this entire state of Ohio have better school districts in the city of Cleveland. Why? Because they have more money to give to child per capita based off of the tax. That's why we got to be progressive in how we look at tax. Because we all got to pay. And we ought to pay them according to what we have. Not pay them according to one blanket state. So, Caesar Augustus had a responsibility to care. He did not care. Second point is, there was a refusal to conform. There's a standard of care that you have to engage in in the world. There's a standard of care. Each of us has a, uh, we, each of us have a, has a responsibility to act uh, as a reasonably prudent person in this world. You cannot just go out here and shoot a gun in the air and think that that is okay because that gunshot is going to come back down. You were not a reasonably prudent person and guess what will happen if that gunshot hits somebody? You go into jail. Each of us have a, have a responsibility to act reasonably in this world. At times, I walk through this church. 
I pick up something, I see something, I move something. Why? Because if someone slips and falls in this building, <laughs> we have a responsibility to act reasonably prudent to make sure that we keep them away from risk and danger while they're in here. If we do not, then we place ourselves in liability. And I come by to tell you, we have too much ministry we need to do in the world, too much ministry we need to do in here for us to spend money on lawsuits. That's right. The text is clear. Julius Caesar refused to conform. The standard of care was breached. That means he did not do what he was supposed to do. He's supposed to Look out for his, not parishioners, I'm going to say parishioners, look out for his, his citizens in his country. He didn't look out for them, he looked out for himself. That's right. He didn't look out for the least, the lost, the lonely, and the left out. He was looking out for how he could pad his pocket, make, his, make money for himself. But he had a responsibility. I stopped by today to tell you the government has a responsibility to us. They have responsibilities to make sure that each of us are, ha, have access to three square meals. They, they have a responsibility. I don't care if they tell you that socialism, it doesn't make a difference. The Constitution says that they want us to, to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How do we get that? If you have policies in place that keep us down, keep us in, and keep us popped up, they have a responsibility. And sometimes we Forget that. Caesar Augustus had a responsibility to his, his citizens, and he refused to do it. Yeah. Check your text messages in the book, not in your phone. It says Caesar Augustus told them they had to go be taxed. Joseph, a poor carpenter living in North Israel. He lived in North Israel, some of the poorest places in the entire country. He was a carpenter going around making money, fixing things up. His wife, was, his, his, his betrothed is pregnant. See, the dust that says you have to go be taxed. And you have to go, not only do you have to go, you have to go to the land in which you were born. Add something to him. Some more obligation, some more regressive. He, he pushes this man. Let me tell you, public policies that's in this world, that's in this country, that's in this city, that's in this neighborhood, public policies to conform to things that align to advance and to help everybody and not to advance and to help some people. Amen. Sometimes we forget that that's why we need to continue to advocate for voting. That's why we need to continue to go down to City Hall and, and, and make our voice known. Why? Because if we don't go down there and tell them the issues we have, if we don't go talk to our city council person, if we don't go down state and talk to our state representatives, they don't think everything they're doing is right. And they're going to think that we don't have no issues. There was public policy issues in this text. Look at the text, look at the text, look at the text. It says that Joseph went from Galilee. Galilee is up north. And, and let me tell you, it was 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. That sounds pretty close to us. About the distance from here to Toledo, I can make that in about an hour and a half. But when you got a pregnant wife, and you got to do it on the donkey. And you don't have any paved roads. And you got, you got to carry your food with you. You got to take a tent because there's no way to stay between there and there. He had a whole lot of stuff he had to go through in order to get down to Bethlehem. Oh, Julius Caesar, the Senate could have put in some public policies that would have stopped this type of tax. But guess what? When you got infighting in the city and infighting in the house, well, they're so busy of advancing their own agendas. They're so busy of making sure that their dollars are being added in their pockets. They're so busy getting money from tax that, that they are trying to, to make money off of. That they're not looking at the common man on Main Street. Text is clear. That's 
what happened in this text. This government could have stopped the taxation. They refused to conform to acting as a reasonably, truly perfect because they wanted to act. They wanted to appease the Caesar. Government should have foresaw, but they didn't. And they refused to conform. Third point is, as a result of all of this, something happens. Third point is, there's a reasonable cause. In negligence, the reasonable cause is called the but for test. But for your actions, I got injured. I run out here and run through that door. Brother Wade puts his foot out. I fall and bust my head on the door. My head is bleeding. There's blood everywhere. But for the actions of Brother Wade, I would have been saved. Now, Brother Wade, you hurt me. My head hurts. I'm embarrassed. And now I got the suit. That's what happens in the text. The text is but war. There's a causation. There's a, there's a reason for all of this. If it wasn't for the actions of the government or the inaction of the city, Joseph wouldn't have had to make the journey all the way down to Bethlehem. But because they were trying to please themselves, when public policy and law goes against the community standards, and hurt people. The government has a responsibility to fix that which they have injured. You what you're talking about, so I'm talking about. It was Andrew Jackson in around 1830. He says, I want, I have this idea of manifest destiny. I want to go from sea to shining sea. And then it is John Marshall who is the Supreme Court Justice that says you cannot just simply take the land away from the from these Native Americans. You got to buy the land from them. And you know what Andrew Jackson says? Andrew Jackson says, I don't care what John Marshall says. I'm going to do what I got to do. And he going to have to do what he got to do. And he began to take the land from the Indians, take it away from them in Alabama, take it away from the Choctaws in Georgia, take it away from the black Indians in, in Alabama, take it away from the Seminoles in Oklahoma, and he began to put some, some rags on them, and they began to get sores on their body, and that is the but for attack. But for you doing wrong, government. Government. But for you doing wrong, the public policy should be you protect all of us. But it wasn't just them. Mm -hmm. Come on. It wasn't just them. Amen. It was a ship. Come on. With stolen slaves on it. Come on. Called the Amistad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming all the way from Senegal. And they had these stolen slaves on it. The slaves had a mutiny, took over the ship. They finally made it to. The coast of America made it to the made it to the harbor, in the having a trial in New Haven, Connecticut, and the African said to the people in America, "Give us our freedom." The government had a responsibility; they had to act with reasonable concern for people. Yet they breached their care, and as a result, these men, these women, were stolen from their own land, had to live on a ship, were sold on auction block, and then the government said, they're nobody. Lord have mercy. Count them as three-fifths of a human, however you calculate that. You're not even a whole person, and the only reason we count you is so that we can have more representation to keep you enslaved. When public policy is not meant to advance people, everybody, the public policy is wrong. Martin Luther King said it this way. He says an unjust law is no law at all. 
This was an unjust law. Amen. Public policy. Amen. I want you to know public policy in America helps keep poor people poor. Amen. Whenever you have a bank that is willing to take, listen, every Sunday we collect money. Every Sunday we collect the money. They go upstairs, they count the money, and then guess what we do? We take it to a white bank who will refuse to even give you a loan to buy you a house. That's public policy, y'all. We have public policies put in place that don't advance us. And what is our responsibility when we have those type of things? Start pulling your money out their banks. Go to Citizens Bank, Nashville, Tennessee, black-owned bank, started by the man that started the National Baptist Public Support, Richard Boyd. Put your money in a black-owned bank. And you say, oh, start requiring something. I was at a meeting this week with the mayor. And the question that I asked was, how come we don't hold these financial institutions accountable? You gotta understand, City Hall got a different perspective than 3474 East 147th Street. Amen. City Hall wants to advance the city. I want to advance Mount Pleasant. City Hall wants to make, wants to continue to make Tremont look good, wants to continue to make Ohio City look good. And then we'll give y'all a few dollars over there. Just be happy to be giving you anything. Listen, we want a part of the pie. We want to be at the table when you're baking the pie because if we're not at the table, then we're on the menu. There's a reasonable part. And if we don't stand up, guess what? They're going to transform this entire neighborhood. You think you live out in Shaker now? You think you live out in University Heights now? You think you live out in Macedonia now? That's where your church going to have to be because they're going to take all this land from around. Hmm. Transformed into what they want it to look like. They are ready to put opportunity corridor to, to some of the poorest folks in the city. Then where the opportunity corridor is, took their houses, paid them pennies, and now they got nowhere to go. So they tore down all of the projects, rebuilt them, and then when they rebuilt, they they start charging the rent that they owe for. That's right. That's what they did. And then we come to church. Seeing these public policies, and we getting upset about the color that the choir wear. Getting upset because they didn't sing the song I wanted them to sing. Getting upset because somebody didn't do what I wanted them to do. We got real issues in our community. Yeah. We don't have time to argue over no small, trivial things. We got real big things to talk about. We got to talk about gentrification. We got to talk about how come our students don't get the same education that some of the students do. That's right. That's what happens in this text. This text shows us that, that, that Caesar Augustus was advancing himself in public policy, did not help the poor people. Joseph was poor. And but for their policy, he would not have had to go. But lastly, and I'm sitting down, <laughs> there's a rewardable compensation. Each claim that you have and can prove, you get damages. That means you get paid. There are different types of damages. One of them is compensatory. That simply means you get paid for the injury that you occurred. Caesar Augustus ain't paying Joseph no money, not at all. Caesar Augustus don't even know who Joseph is. He don't care that Joseph was poor and had to travel 80 miles and had a pregnant wife and had to do it on the bar. No, he don't care about none of that. All he wanted was his money. But there are damages that come along with being damaged. But the beauty of this text is the damages in which were paid absolved Julius Caesar, not Julius Caesar, Caesar Augustus of even his wrong. What are you talking about, stuff? The text is clear. The text says, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger 
because there was no room for him in the end. I stop by to tell you that it all was in God's plan Amen. to get Joseph down to Bethlehem, Amen. to get Jesus down in Mary's belly. But Mary didn't have to go, but he took her with him. And then they get to Bethlehem, and then they have nowhere to lay. And then in a manger, Come on. Mary has a baby. Mm -hmm. The reward is this. We all mess up. Come on, come on. Caesar Augustus is really just a metaphor for the life in which we all live. Yeah. Governments mess up because governments are not God. But the beauty of it is God saw that the, there was negligence in the world. Amen. That negligence started when Adam decided that he was going to eat of the fruit of good and evil and his eyes are opened up and he sees his nakedness and he sees that he has fallen short and what, the, what happened? Sin enters the world and God you messed up, but I got a plan. Got a plan. Come on. Listen, you were negligent, Adam. You had a duty. You did not keep your duty. You preached it. And you are the but for cause of the fall of the man. If it were not for your sin, man would not have entered sin. But guess what? I'm going to pay the price. Amen. That's what the text is about. That's what Christmas is about. That even when we mess up, there comes one through the manger who says, I'm willing to die for you so that you might have the right to the tree of my death. See, the dust is messed up. I tell you the truth, I mess up every day. But the truth of the matter is, I'm so glad that one day that Jesus was born and in his birth, I have new life. That's right. Amen. Amen. That is what Christmas is about. Amen. That is what this text is about. We are rewarded because of Adam's sin. We are rewarded with Jesus being our Lord and Savior and willing to die so that we might do it again. That is the text. We all are sure. Amen. And I want you to know today no matter how much you fall short, yeah, yeah. Jesus died and got up so that you might have a right. To the That's the gospel. Amen. Amen. And unless you have accepted it, you can live this life all you want, make all the money, get all the degrees. But if you have not made him your Lord and Savior, Lord have mercy. you will lift up your eyes and head. But you got to know, if you know that you have a rewardable compensation in that he died for your sin, yeah. you were supposed to die, he died in your place. As we all stand around this church. I extend to you an invitation to an everlasting tour with Jesus. I don't care where you are in your wall. I don't care how old you are. You need to know this about this text and know this about this Jesus. Caesar Augustus don't care about you. This world does not care about you. There is one who does. If you don't know him, you need to get to know him. Why? Because you don't want to die without him. He's a good fire insurance. Thank you.